Astronauts are some of the most highly trained individuals the world has ever seen. NASA used virtually every simulation and training method available to them in the 1960s to ready the fateful individuals for their historic flight. Simulating their experience played a key role in how the astronauts functioned on the moon, and everything down to how the flag was planted was rehearsed until it was ingrained in their muscle memory. Let's take a look at exactly how simulating the moon landing on the ground made reaching further than humans ever had before possible. In order to train astronauts, NASA had to build accurate models of practically every situation the crew could find themselves in. This included things like recreating a lunar lander and accurately depicting the landscape of the landing site. Everything was done to make sure that when it was mission time, the astronauts had seen it all before. In this photo, Neil Armstrong is seen practicing his first step onto the moon and off the lunar lander, but on Earth. In a 2003 email, Armstrong was actually quoted as saying this about this picture. I really don't have the foggiest idea of what I was doing. I don't think it had anything to do with simulation. If I were simulating on a mission phase, I would have the helmet on and the suit pressurized. On the other hand, if it was only five days before flight, I would not be wearing the suit unless it was for some purpose. The simulations that Armstrong and others did helped astronauts get to the moon in the 1960s, but they looked a little different from what we would consider simulations today. There were few computers involved, and simulating meant getting out there and building a model to practice with. Nowadays, astronauts experience reduced gravity by taking trips up in specially designed jetliners, which fly parabolic arcs, giving riders realistic zero gravity for less than a minute at a time. When training the astronauts for the Apollo missions, moon gravity was simulated by suspending each astronaut on a steep incline horizontally. This allowed for one-sixth of Earth's gravity to be felt by the astronaut on their feet. No stone was left unturned in the quest for simulating everything that the astronauts might experience. NASA even teamed up with Bell Aerosystems to create a model Apollo lander from tubular aluminum. 4,200 pounds of thrust was generated from an electric turbofan engine, which allowed for accurate handling in Earth's gravity compared to the moon. Armstrong completed many test flights in the Mach lander to prepare himself for piloting the actual lander on its descent to the moon. Once Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, their primary mission was then to collect moon rocks and observe the moon from a first-person perspective. In order to train astronauts for this task, NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey USGS, blasted large craters on the Arizona desert to simulate lunar terrain. Teams of geologists and scientists from USGS took the astronauts on tours of the landscape, giving them in-depth knowledge of geologic features and lunar landscapes. Astronauts would also drive a replica lunar rover around the terrain and practice all soil collection and sampling techniques they had at hand. Surprisingly, the research and development completed by the USGS in simulating the moon's surface actually led to advances in the understanding of how craters formed. In the effort to accurately recreate lunar craters on Earth, the team studied craters to a greater extent than had ever been done before in human history. Understanding was increased so far that three terrestrial craters were discovered on Earth. One was in the Sierra Madera in Texas, one at Chesapeake Bay, and another in southeastern Nevada. Astronauts practiced for circumstances they may find themselves in diverging from the intended plan as well. Like military pilots, they practice for making a crash landing in the jungle. This jungle survival training took the crew to the Panama Jungle Survival School in the Panama Canal Zone. They learned how to find food, survive in dense jungle, and build shelter. They mastered everything necessary to survive the worst of circumstances. You can actually see footage here from NASA in 1969 depicting simulation training at the Lunar Research Center. Simulation continued day and night 
for the astronauts all the way up to launch day, from simulating water landings for the crew to how they would film the surface of the moon once there. Everything was practiced and rehearsed. After all, NASA didn't want the $25.4 billion they spent on the Apollo programs to go to waste. Another reason for all of this simulation goes beyond making sure the astronauts had their moves right. NASA wanted to test and simulate absolutely everything to make sure that what was planned was actually feasible. This was, after all, the first time anyone had landed on the moon, so none of the fine mechanics had ever been worked out before. Ultimately, simulation proved to be the most significant task the astronauts and NASA would accomplish, other than, of course, landing on the moon.